Well, if you were with us before the top of the hour, you just saw the British Prime Minister Boris Johnson speaking in front of 10 Downing Street. This as an election kicks off in the UK. We can leave the EU as one UK, whole and entire and perfect as we promised. And so it's been frankly mind-boggling in the last few weeks to see how Parliament first, first voted to approve this deal and then voted for delay. And I'm afraid that it is clear that if Parliament had its way, then this country would not be leaving even on January the 31st. And that, of course, is bad for democracy. It's disastrous for trust in politics. Why should MPs decide that they can cancel the result of a referendum? And again, that was Boris Johnson just moments ago in front of 10 Downing Street. Now, earlier today, Mr. Johnson did go to Buckingham Palace. He asked the Queen to dissolve Parliament. She did, and we are now at the start of a five-week campaign in the UK. Boris Johnson on his way right now to his first rallying event. And with that, let's bring in Renee Filipponi, because she was listening in on the speech uh, from Johnson's home riding, in fact, in Uxbridge, which is about a 45-minute drive out of central London. So, Renee, hello to you. Uh, hard to, to not ignore the fact that this was all about Brexit. You heard it time and again in what Boris Johnson was saying. What were your takeaways when you were listening to the British Conservative leader? Well, Michael, even when he wasn't talking about Brexit, he was talking about issues like national health care, police services, education. It was all about vote for us so we can get Brexit over with so that we can now deal with those other issues. He, he talked about things like Parliament being paralyzed and that he's had a deal that's been oven ready for some time and Parliament just is not willing to get on with it. And he also raised concerns that a vote for a party like Labour, if they were to get into power, would lead to a horror show of dither and delay. Now that frustration he's voicing and he did today to launch the election about nothing getting done is something we're really hearing here on the streets in his home riding. He won here in 2017 by 5,000 votes. Uh, uh, this was a, a leave part of the, the country uh, and they just want things to get to get on with it. Have a listen to what some people had to say this morning. Get on with the job. You know, I think he's great actually got some guts. I'm more of a traditional Conservative but I won't be voting for the Conservatives now. I don't really have any feelings about any of them anymore. I don't, uh, I don't have any faith in them. And even that last woman you heard from there, despite her lack of faith in politicians, she says she will still, however, vote for Boris Johnson and the Conservatives. We know right now with uh, looking at a number of polls, the Tories are in the lead by double digits, followed by Labour, the Liberal Democrats, and then the Brexit Party. Okay, so let's talk about strategy then. Uh, you talked about the polls. As we said, this has all been triggered around Brexit. So what are we going to hear from the main parties as they begin this five-week campaign? Well, they're all trying to position themselves when it comes to their strategy for Brexit. We know the Tory strategy is quite clear. They want to get that deal that uh, Boris Johnson struck with the EU through Parliament and get out of the uh, EU by the end of January. Uh, the Liberal Democrats are completely on the other side. They say a vote for them if they're able to get into power means Brexit just won't happen. Uh, it will go back to remain. Uh, however, the Labour Party with their leader Jeremy Corbyn uh, has been accused of sitting on the fence when it comes to Brexit. He says, you know, they will give the people another vote. Uh, a lot of that has to do with the fact that they have some candidates in leave ridings and some candidates in remain ridings. So they need to be very careful about how they position themselves going into this general election. Uh, Camilla Tomini uh, is an associate editor with the Daily Telegraph. Have a listen to how she explains sort of the strategy uh, behind this campaign. Well, the winning elected strategy for Labour should be to try and make an appeal to people that they've had enough of the Conservatives, they've had enough of Conservative cuts, and that Boris Johnson isn't to be trusted. The only trouble is, because Labour's Brexit policy has been so muddled, the electorate are wondering whether they can trust Jeremy Corbyn to deliver on the referendum result. And there are a great many Leave voters who are also left-leaning in Labour that don't like the fact that Corbyn is a Marxist and equally don't like the fact that Labour seems to be distancing itself from its Brexit roots and going in a more Remain direction. 
Now, we've known for quite some time how divisive the issue of Brexit has been here in the UK, uh, and those strong emotions are looking like they're going to carry themselves into this five-week campaign. We know some MPs who are campaigning are already being told not to go out late at night. They're carrying security alarms because the emotion around the issues right now is just so strong. Well, we'll certainly be following the campaign. Renee, thank you for this. Our Renee Filippone in Boris Johnson's riding of Uxbridge outside of London.